What's up you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe Investor channel. We've talked a lot about selling options and how much cash flow you can generate and how much more efficient you can be with cash flow by selling options. So in today's video, I want to explore how to get started doing this very simply with a very small amount of cash so you can start to understand how it works and potentially dramatically change the course of your portfolio and your cash flow in the future. <laughs> All right, guys, we're looking at my April 2024 uh, dividend stock spreadsheet, which is available to all members of the Patreon community. I put it out every month. It tells you all the dividend stocks that have been raising their dividend for at least five consecutive years. It's a great starting spot to build a dividend portfolio or potentially look for good options for selling covered calls. If you want to learn more about joining the Patreon community, check out the link down in the description below. So here we're looking at the April 2024 spreadsheet. So you've seen in a lot of my videos where I talk about selling options, covered calls, cash secured puts, on much more expensive investments like ETFs from IWM, the Russell 2000, or QQQ, SPY, the S&P 500. And it's true that these investments do require a lot more upfront capital that some of you might be thinking, Man, I don't have that much capital, but I want to start this strategy. Good news is you can get your feet wet, get started here with a lot less capital. So I'm gonna share with you three different examples from my spreadsheet and we'll work through how that would look. But before we do that, let's talk briefly, make sure we have a complete understanding of covered calls before we jump in. And if you already understand completely covered calls, no worries, you don't have to watch this part. Go ahead and jump forward in the video to this timestamp. Okay, so remember that when we're talking about covered calls, whenever you sell a call option, in this case, when you own the shares and you sell a call option, that's known as a covered call because you already own the shares shares. You are very much limiting the risk of selling that option. When we sell a covered call, we're essentially capping or putting a limit on how much growth or capital appreciation we can receive from the stock. Here's a quick example. You've got here a blue line and a red line. The blue line is the starting spot for the price of the stock of the ETF. We'll call this $100 just to play it safe. Okay, $100 here. If we don't have a covered call in place, if the market rises from 100 to 110, you get to participate in all of that upside appreciation in the stock price. However, you can generate quite a bit of option premium to supplement your dividend income, in the case of dividend stocks, by selling covered calls. And what that does is it, it places a limit on how much capital appreciation you receive. Now, we don't know what that's gonna happen in the future. The market could go up, the market could go down, could go up by a lot, down by a lot, and stay pretty much flat. The great news about covered calls is you win most of the time. As long as the stock does not go against you by a lot, you're gonna collect option premium and that option contract you sold is likely to expire worthless. We've got the current price here and we've got our sold call strike price. This is the limit on which you would participate in growth. So for example, let's say um, the green line is the market price here. It starts here and then it kind of does this. It goes up, does this, drops down, kind of goes up here, ends let's say right here. Okay, and then really quick, let me just give you the price here. Let's say that the strike price was 105. So in this situation, the market went from, let's say 100, it went up to what, 105, down below 100 back here and settled below this strike price. So when that happens, the contract at expiration, we're calling the end of this graph expiration, when that happens, if it's below 105, your strike price, then that contract you sold expires worthless, which is what you want to have happen because you get to keep all that option premium and you're not obligated to sell your shares. So that's one situation. You could also have the market do this. It could tank and just stay down here, way right, and then end here. Same result for you at the end of the day. You sold the option, you received premium, and then at the end of the day, all of your premium, that contract expire worthless and you keep all the premium. The market could even do this. It could come here, go up top here, kind of right in here and, and settle right here. In which case you get to keep all the option premium and the contract expires worthless. Most of the time, depending on how aggressive you write your covered call. And by the way, whenever I say write, I mean sell. They mean the exact same thing. So when I, whenever I sell a contract and the price ends up below my strike price, the contract is worthless at expiration. All three of these scenarios, contract expires worthless. But occasionally we do have situations where the market is going to end up in the money. It might do this, come in here and right here, and then end right here. When that happens, you're going to be assigned. And when you get assigned, you're required to sell your shares, the 100 shares per contract, right at this price, the red one right here at 105, as opposed to say 106 or 107, wherever the market ended up. 
So when this happens, let's be very clear here. When the market rose from 100 up to, let's say 106, you get to participate as the option seller in almost all of that capital appreciation. All of this section right here, all of this in the center here, you get to participate in all of this capital appreciation because you're not selling at 102, 103, 104, you get to sell at 105. So from 100 to, to 105 is all upside appreciation that you get to participate in as the option seller. However, this section right here, up here, anything above the red line, all of this is opportunity cost, meaning the stock price rose above our strike price, but we don't get to receive any of this extra capital appreciation because it is above our strike price. You're not losing money in this situation. You're missing out on the opportunity to generate additional capital appreciation. The only time you can lose with a covered call is when this red line here is below the amount that you paid for the stock. Because if you get assigned in that scenario, you will be selling your shares for less than you bought them for, and that would be a loss. Okay, so now that we understand more about covered calls, let's dive into three different examples. Right now, this spreadsheet is sorted based off of the price of the stock. So I'm sorting it based on lowest to highest, and I also am filtering, let me just scroll over here, I'm also filtering based on the option frequency right here to show as weekly, um, because I think it's generally better to sell weekly options as opposed to monthly, though you could also sell monthly, but with the weekly frequency available to you. So let's first off take a look at a really cheap dividend stock that also happens to have quite a bit of yield, and that is Arbor Realty Trust right here, ticker symbol ABR, only priced at $12.96 per share, and it's currently yielding 13.27%, with really great dividend metrics here, good revenue, good dividend growth rates, so we're taking a closer look at the option chain for Arbor Realty Trust, and I went ahead and pulled this into paint so that way we can actually uh, take a closer look and make some adjustments on the screen here. So you'll notice a few things. First off, we have earnings coming up, and we always need to be cognizant of earnings and potentially be aware that there's going to be a lot more volatility and likelihood for steep changes in the price up or down depending on the outcome and, and investor sentiment. So in this situation we've got, today is April the 12th and we're uh, the day of filming and we're looking at April the 19th and there, we could also look at April 26th, but once you get closer to April 26th, you're dealing with earnings. You could write the 26th for expiration, but I think the 19th is a better option here. We're looking exactly seven days away from today. First off, we've got market price right here up top. These are all of the different expirations right here, which show you can always select these based on what, or unselect them based on which contract you want to look at. We're looking at the current contract, which is expiring April 19th, 2024, which is exactly seven days away. And then right here, these are all of your strike prices. These are those prices, that red line we talked about, where you would then be obligated to sell your shares at that price if the actual market price of the stock is above that level at expiration. Then we've also got calls on the left side here, this section right here, and then on the right side, we have puts. We're only gonna look about look at calls here, so covered calls in this situation. Then we also have delta right here, this section, and with delta, there the technical definition is the rate of change in this price right here for the options compared to the actual underlying changes in the price of Arbor Realty Trust. So for example, at 0.998, that means that for every dollar change in the price up here of 12 of ABR, that this price right here is going to change almost exactly the same. So it moves almost exactly the same as the actual underlying stock price. Whereas this delta right here, 0.105, for every dollar change in ABR, it's actually only going to move this price here by about 10 cents. So in this situation here, when we talk about writing covered calls, we likely want to do it so out of the money. So in this situation, if the market price is 1228 and we're just buying into Arbor Realty Trust, we would want to look at at least a strike price of 1250 or higher. 1250 would be the most aggressive here because it's the closest to the market price, but it will also come with the most option premium. And then we also lastly here, we're looking at the bid and the ask. What this tells you is the number on the left, the bid, is the highest price that an option buyer is willing to pay for that option. And then the ask is the lowest price that an option seller is willing to sell the option. You don't have a contract that actually gets sold unless a buyer and a seller agree on a price. So in this situation, let's take a look at this option right here, which is the 1250 strike price. And just to be clear here, if the price of ABR is above 1250 at expiration, you will be assigned and obligated to sell your shares at 1250 per share, which is higher than you paid for. And that's a good thing. Now, if 
if ABR goes up to $14 per share, then there's definitely some opportunity cost there, but you are getting partially compensated for that with that option premium you get to keep. So in this situation here, if you bought it for $12.28, you'd have to buy 100 shares, right? Because every option contract is essentially for 100 shares. And so this number right here is based on one share. So you have to take it and multiply it by 100. So in this situation, you would have to purchase, you know, 100 shares. So 12.28 current market price times 100 shares. You'd have to invest $1,228 to run this strategy for one contract. And as far as the option premium is concerned right here, you'd collect somewhere between likely 10 to 20 cents per share or 10 to $20. Let's go right in between it. $15 here. So for your $1,228 investment, if you sold one option contract, you'd be able to collect about $15 for one week's time. And if you were to sell this contract and it ends up expiring worthless in seven more days, you can do another covered call contract and collect another $15. And I know that $15 doesn't sound like a lot for one week, but you're only putting up $1,228 in capital to get it actually quite a bit of income considering the price of the stock and the fact that you can do it every single week. I mean, if you think about it this way, you know, normally the yield on, on ABR is I think around 13% and the total going back here to the dividend stock spreadsheet, if you look at the actual dividend per share over the entire year, it's $1.72 right here. So let's just assume, let's make an assumption that you could every single week sell a covered call and collect $15. Actually, better yet, let's be more conservative. Let's say you could only collect $10, okay? We'll take $10 per week and then multiply it by 52 weeks, saying you can do it every single week, okay? $520 for the year. Divide that by 100, 100 shares, okay? And that would be $5.20 per share. But remember, the amount of the dividend was only, what, 172. So if you take 520 plus 172, okay? That is $6.92 per share in cash flow. And if you divide that by 172, you're taking, you're, you're 4Xing your cash flow from this investment by selling covered calls above your current strike price. So ABR, great starter dividend stock where you can get a pretty good yield and you can collect additional income way above what you'd collect by just owning the stock. All right, next up, let's take a look at Pfizer here, PFE. Here's the option chain for Pfizer. We've got the market price right here for Pfizer up top, the current price, and then we've also got the current contract we're looking at, which is exactly seven days from today, April 19th, 2024. Then we also have all of our different strike prices right here and our current bid and ask. So let's take a look here at out of the money and out of the money strike price, we've got 26, which is essentially at the money. So you could do 26 and you'd have a slight bit of a loss here, like two cents per share. So about so about a $2 loss here, not factoring in the actual option premium if you had to sell your shares. But we'll be a little bit safer here. Let's go ahead and utilize the 2650 strike price right here. So again, this is above our price that we paid for the stock, okay? It's got a 32 delta. And it's got a bid and an ask here of 19 cents and 20 cents. So let's just assume we can collect 19 cents here or per share or $19 because you multiplied by 100. So you're investing $2,602 to buy 100 shares. And in the one contract for the, for the week, you collect, we'll say, we'll call it 20 just for a round number, $20 for that contract. And as long as the price does not end up at 2650 at expiration or above that price, then that contract will expire worthless. You get to keep all $20 and you can do it again the next week. And again, $20 by itself doesn't sound like a lot of money. I get that, but when it adds up over time, remember with PFE, let me just go back to my dividend stock spreadsheet here. You'll see that with PFE, we are collecting annually by holding this stock $1.68 per share, which is good, but it's gonna pale in comparison to what we can collect with the option premium as well. Let's assume we can collect 20 cents per share or $20 per contract every single week. And better yet, we'll be conservative. We'll say it's $15 per week instead, okay? $15 per week, every week. We'll take $15 here, multiply that by 52. That's $780 per year in option premium, not factoring in the extra dividend income you receive. So 780 divided by 100 is $7.80 per share, okay? 780, and let's assume you could also collect the dividend every year, okay? 168, 
that'd be total cash flow every year of $9.48 per share. And you take that 9.48 per share and divide it by what you would just collect with the dividend, which is 168. So instead of collecting 168, now you're collecting over 5X what you collect with just the dividend. Let's look at HPQ right here. HP Incorporated in the information technology sector, 15 years of dividend growth every single year. And they've got a current dividend yield of 3.79% and their annual dividend per share is $1.10. Let's see how much we can increase that by selling covered calls. Okay, so we have a market price for HP right now of $28.53 per share, and we've also got our current contract we're looking at for April 19th, which is seven days from today. And we've got our strike prices and our current option prices for each contract. With the market price being $28.53 per share, we could either go right at the money here at $28.50, which would be a slight very slight loss, or we could just decide to go out of the money at 29, 29.50, or 30. Let's go at the 29 right here. You collect somewhere between 23 and 25 cents per share, or 23 to 25 dollars per contract every single week at this level. So going to our calculator here, we'll take, we'll assume 24, right in the middle, 24 dollars per contract, and we could potentially do this every single week, so multiply by 52 weeks. That's $1,248 for the entire year. We'll take that divided by 100. That is 1248 per share. Remember our dividend was only 110 per share. So we'll take 1248. We'll add our dividend for the year, 110, which would be a total cash flow for the year of 1358 per share. When you factor in how much you'd only get by just collecting the dividend all year and not selling any option premium, you divide that by 110. That's essentially 12x. 12x the amount of cash flow by selling covered calls on HP rather than just collecting the dividend. So you don't have to be this person that just sells options all the time and all the big ETFs. You can just level up significantly the amount of cash flow you get by selling covered calls on the dividend stocks you already own. By the way, if you take your $13.58 per share, okay, you take that and you divide it by the current market price, you're taking your yield like way higher, $20.53. That's a yield of 47% compared to what, like 3 4% you were before. And not that every single week you'll always be able to sell covered calls, but if you think about it within the context of holding a dividend stock, just collecting the dividend and passively collecting income, it just doesn't take a lot of work every week to collect quite a bit of income. And you can get started for $1,200, $2,500, $2,800, and start to learn the ropes here with very little capital at risk and see just how much of an impact selling options can have in your portfolio. Again, if you want to learn more about how to do this, you can join an amazing investor community, the Average Joe Investor Patreon community. You can get access to the Discord and, and learn from these other investors, ask questions. Or if you want to get your hands dirty right away and work exclusively one-on-one -on -one with me, you can do that as well. We've got a few different options for you depending on how much time you want to set aside with me exclusively. If you want to learn more, check out the link down in the description below. Hopefully you found some value in this video, guys. Make sure to leave your two cents down in the comments below. It's my goal to respond to as many comments comments as possible on the day I post a new video. That's all I got for you guys. Have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.